All right, so I'm back here once again, but this time I'm here to give you guys my top 10 mixtapes of the decade. Pretty much, you know what I'm saying, I've already dropped the album for uh, my top 10 albums of the decades. If you guys haven't seen it already, that is in the description below. Please go check that out. So yeah, pretty much, man, the way that this is going to go, like, I'm going to do this one different from the way that I did my albums. The way I'm going to do this one, I'm going to pretty much... I'm gonna just pick my top 10 favorite albums from the 2010s and it's just gonna be whatever. I ain't gonna pick one from like specific years, it's just gonna be whatever. And yeah, pretty much like the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like sometimes mixtapes get overlooked and then we didn't got to a point. I feel like we didn't got to a point in like, you know what I'm saying, and just the music industry or whatever where it's like we don't I don't I don't really know how how to categorize a mixtape or an album. Like what's the they people don't really have a nothing to really define it as no more so yeah without further ado man i'm finna get into it my top 10 mixtapes of the decade let's go diamonds bullying on my chest no fucking blouse up bitch i make it rain shower you dig that no labels 2 came out in 2014 that was like my uh senior year of high school he got like 25 tracks on it and it's like an hour and 30 minutes the thing about this man i, 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 mean, I listened to it recently and pretty much like i didn't realize this mixtape was that long but the thing about it is like all the tracks on here like these like if you if you listen to the migos during this time and you heard this mixtape like you will you will understand like this mixtape had no skips on it to me pretty much and it's just bangers on it's just bangers every single track the features on here killed it and the production on here was just Production on here was just, I, it was just, it was just hype and just turn. Another thing too about this mixtape, a lot of people ain't know that Offset when like he wasn't on um the first mixtape YRN. A lot of people ain't know that. I think he was in uh he was in jail or something at the time. And when No Labels Two came out, he was on us. We had just gotten out of jail, so it's like you listen to him and you can tell like you can hear the um I don't know you can hear the difference or whatever he was it was like he was still kind of trying to find his voice at that point so my favorite tracks from this mixtape we got copy me we got eminem's fight night handsome and wealthy birds yrh freak no more body parts image smith and young rich niggas Lil Uzi vs. The World, man, this mixtape came out in 2016, and it's like, it's literally nine tracks, and it's about 30 minutes long. In my opinion, this mixtape has no skips. Like, every single track on here is a banger. 2016, in my opinion, like, that was like the year when Uzi pretty much just broke out. Like, he dropped a mixtape after this one, um, the Perfect Love Tape, but this is the one that I feel like, this is the one that kind of like pushed him into that mainstream that mainstream stratosphere like you know what i'm saying when people just paying attention to his music all right so my favorite tracks from this mixtape i'm gonna be honest i pretty much like the whole mixtape but the songs that i return to the most is probably money longer and grab the wheel days before rodeo came out in 2014 um, it's 14 tracks and about 50 minutes long. Pretty much, man, the way I feel about this album, I feel like that this album was like a more polished version of what he was trying to do with his first mixtape, Al Pharaoh. I like everything about this. Like, the production on here is, is just super dark. It's just super, just edgy. And this sound, to me, like, this is the sound that he pretty much carried into... His debut album that dropped in 2015, Rodeo. Another thing too with this mixtape, this is the first like project or whatever where I heard they had me like Travis Scott and Young Thug need to make a project together. Skyfall and Mama Cita, amazing. So my favorite tracks from this mixtape, Mama Cita, Quintana Part 2, Don't Play, Skyfall, Sloppy Toppy, and Backyard. If You're Reading This Is Too Late came out in 2015, um, it's approximately 17 tracks in about an hour long. The production of this mixtape was great. The thing about it is, I feel like you get that same, with this production, you get that same Drake feel, but it's like at the same time, it's more tailor-made for him rapping instead of, you know, doing the singing or whatever. It kind of reminded, I don't know, listening to it, it kind of it gave me like a uh, Scorpion Side A feel. 
I don't know, you take, you know what I'm saying, you take away some of the, uh, some like the bouncier tracks inside of but yeah, that's the kind of vibe I was getting from the production, but you know what I'm saying, I like it. Another thing too with this mixtape, I feel like the feature shorter, I feel like the features didn't like overshadow Drake or nothing like that. I feel like the features sort of added, you know what I'm saying, they added to the songs, like I feel like the features on here were great. It went number three, Lil Wayne on used to, killed it, wrapped his ass off, always. Party Next Door. Sounded great and Travis Scott with company. So yeah, thing is like I know that this mixtape is a little bit tainted all because of the whole controversy surrounding it with the whole Quentin Miller junk and all that and how that led to the whole meat mill and beef and all that junk, man. But I like it for what it is. If it if it is ghost written, it is what it is. He wouldn't be the first artist that did it. It just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of take away some of his rap credit. So, yeah. Favorite tracks from this mixtape. Legend. Energy. Know Yourself. No Telling. Star 6-7. Preach. Used to. Six Man. Company. You and the Six. Jungle. 6 p.m. New York. Barter 6 came out in 2015 and it's 13 tracks and about 50 minutes long. I feel like with Barter 6, Young Thug kind of moved out of that whole... Young Thug kinda, I feel like Young Thug moved out of that Lil Wayne shadow, even though the, even though the mixtape is called Barter 6. I feel like he kind of moved out of Lil Wayne's shadow in terms of his uh, ter in terms of his sound. He found his own voice and he found his own pocket. I feel like this is when I feel like this is when Young Thug started like just getting into that more just I don't know just playing with his voice and doing more high pitch. You know what I'm saying? Just slurring. I don't know just slurring his words and y'all y'all know how Young Thug do it. It's very slime like. So yeah. Also, I feel like this is the mixtape that pretty much like jumps like pushed his career or whatever and, and helped him get more mainstream even though you know later down the line he, he released some later projects that pushed him even further than where he was back then so favorite tracks from the barter six we got with that we got check we got never had it we got dream dome hell time we got od and just might be so yeah Cushion OJ came out in 2010. It's 20 tracks and about an hour long. All right, so this mixtape was unique to anything that I ever heard at this point. Cause I've never, I had, up to this point, up to that point, I have never heard a, a rapper talk about weed as much as this guy talked about weed. And the way that he, the way that his mixtapes were set up, like the way that his mixtapes production and all that stuff was set up, it was just so moody not in like a depression mood kind of way but just in the chill vibe type of way like you like every single song on here like it, you can just vibe out you can just vibe out too you can just ride to another thing too that i like he, that he did with the mixtape something that we don't see a lot today skits please bring back the easy water skits i love those those were hilarious i wish you'd go back to doing those at some point in the future but yeah, another thing too about the production of this, I love all the um, I love all the soul samples they use. Like prime example, the one from the uh, the kid Frankie samples, uh, loose ends hanging on by a string. So that was dope how he flipped that and you know what I'm saying I rapped over it. My favorite tracks from this mixtape, uh, Mesmerize, The Statement, The Kid Frankie, Up, Never Been, In the Cut, Still Blazing, Good Day. Yeah. Fell from the Day came out in 2012. It's 17 tracks and about 50 minutes long. I love the production. It's super southern. Like, this mixtape sounds to me like a combination between if UGK fused with Outkast. You'll get something super bassy but soulful at the same time. Another thing that I liked about this mixtape is the narrative of it. The narrative of it is pretty much like... It kind of gave me like a good kid, mad city vibe. It ain't as detailed like a good kid, mad city. But if you listen to the if you listen to the songs and paying attention to it, like it's a, it's a, it's a nice narrative about you know what I'm saying. Pretty much him going throughout the day as an up and coming up as an up and coming rapper. My favorite tracks for this mixtape we got Wake Up, Yesterday, Fell in the Day theme, Me and My Old School, Down and Out, Sky Club. Package though, Temptation, Handwriting, Insomnia, and The Alarm. 
Alright, so the thing about this mixtape, I didn't like this mixtape at first. Pretty much, like, I didn't listen to this mixtape until his debut album came out. I listened to that, loved it, and that made me go back and listen to this. The production of this mixtape, man, I'm gonna be honest, man, I wish he'd go back to this. I love, man, I love this mixtape for the production. Like, the production when it came out, like, it was so different and new at the time. Like, it was like he, like, he took his... Harlem, New York roots or whatever, and mixed it with the Houston, with the Houston chopping the screws, like, and it was just beautiful. I mean, then the way he was rapping, like, it was kind of, I don't know, it was like a, it, it was different from what was going on at the time. Like, it was like a combination of Bone Thugs and Harmony and, like, some, I don't know, some Houston type junk, like some chopping the screw type stuff. So, my favorite tracks from this mixtape Peso, Bass, What's Up? Brand new guy, schoolboy, you killed that. Get lit. Kissing pink. Houston overhead. Leaf. And out of this world. Sylvia Dumo came out in 2014, and it's like 14 tracks and 50 minutes long. All right, pretty much this was like my first intro into Isaiah Rashad. I didn't know like TD hadn't signed a new artist or none of that until this mixtape dropped. All I seen was TD's new signee, Isaiah Rashad, drops a new project inside with Sylvia Dumo. The production of this mixtape was great to me. I loved it. It was like a it was like a combination of um taking like it was like a combination of taking like black hippie production and like mixing it with southern production. Like that's the type of vibe that I got from this. Like this production, like it had me and a couple other people calling Isaiah Rashad did Kendrick Lamar of the South. Like the way he was approaching it approaching this production and just doing his thing. Like it was it was I don't know it was breath the first out. It was it was something new. So yeah. My favorite tracks from this mixtape, Webby Flow, R.I.P. Kevin Miller, Ronnie Drake, Tranquility, Menthol, Modish, Heavenly Father, Banana, Brad Jordan, and Shot You Down. Friday Night Lights came out in 2010. It's 20 tracks and it's about an hour and 15 minutes. So pretty much, man, this was like my first intro into J. Cole. Somebody introduced me into J. Cole and I immediately, like, I, I just fell in love with this mixtape. This was one of the mixtapes that I heard and I was like, bro, I gotta go, like, I gotta go back and listen to all his old stuff. And this is when I pretty much found out, you know what I'm saying, he was signed to, um, he was signed to Jay-Z. And it was like, from this point on, he became one of, one of my favorite artists. I like the production that he used pretty much, like, of course he used some of, uh, he used some of Kanye old beats and rapped over those. But it, it kind of gave me a Kanye vibe as far as, like, like, the college dropout and, like, you know what I'm saying, late registration as far as, like, how soulful they was and, like, all the just, you know what I'm saying, the soul samples that he used. One other thing, too, that I liked about this project... The motivational intros. This is back when J. Cole used to always have like some type of motivational intro where he kinda just talking and just I don't know, man. He sound like a he sound like a life coach on that junk. But I I liked it for what it was and I liked what he was trying to do and it I don't know. It was to me it was super motivational and it helped out. Helped me get through high school. And another thing too about this mixtape, like I said, this was like my first intro on the J. Cole. And like this is like, I don't know. J. Cole was like the first artist that I actually resonated with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Paid attention. You know, I paid attention to his lyrics deeper and just, I don't know. He just, the stuff he was rapping about kind of fit what I was kind of, what I was going through as far as like school, sports, and just, you know what I'm saying? Just dealing with, just dealing with life in general. Just the stuff that I was thinking about, relationships, and just, I don't know. I just, he, the stuff he was rapping about really just resonated with me. And this this mixtape holds a special place with me. I remember like taking finals, like every single, like every time I had find, like every time finals week came, up, I had like a study session, and I just listened to this mixtape on repeat. Like this mixtape was just this mixtape literally became a part of life. So yeah, that's that's why I'm my number one. I I love this mixtape. So yeah. And another thing too, like this was like the start of my musical journey as far as like venturing out, venturing out from um trap music. Cause when I was in middle school, like I used to just listen to I used to just listen to like a lot of trap music. And then when I got to high school, like my ninth grade year, that's when I got on this. And it pretty much sent me on like a whole new kind of put me in like a new mind state. And I started looking for other like just other just conscious rappers. So yeah. My favorite tracks from this mixtape. 
Too deep for the intro. Before I'm gone. Vilmatic. Blow up. Higher. In the morning. Two Face. The autograph. Best friend. Cost me a lot. Premeditated mur murder. Love me not. Sea world. Farewell. And looking for trouble. Those are my top 10 mixtapes of the decade. Uh, pretty much like the reason why I decided to split these is because I feel like we even got to a point in music where like, I, there's, I don't really know what a mixtape is at this point. And so like mixtapes, they like mixtapes, you could just back in the day, like in the early 2010s, all you had to do was just go on a mixtape on the mixtape website, like live mixtapes, that piff, spin real or something like that. All you had to do is just go on there and download it. But it's it's like now you can go they stream, I don't know, they streaming the mixtapes now, so it's like I don't know what to categorize mixtapes as an album or what. Especially when they popping up on streaming websites and it's like I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. That's why I broke it up between, you know, albums over here and mixtapes over here. And I feel like mixtapes and albums got two different, I feel like mixtapes and albums got two different feels. Give me y'all list. Please drop y'all list in the comment section. Let me know how y'all feel about my list. Tell me if I was wrong about some things. I don't know. Let me know what mixtapes that y'all would have replaced mine, that y'all would have replaced mine with. So, like, yeah. Like I said, please drop y'all list in the comment section. Let me know if it's some mixtapes that y'all think that should have made my list or not made my list. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Be sure to follow me at the social media at right here. And yeah, please give me all ideas of what y'all think that I should listen to, react to, anything like that. And yeah, once again, this is T. Thank you guys for watching this video. Peace. I be that pretty motherfucker. Harlem's what I'm rapping. Tell my niggas with the bitch and we gon' make it in a second.